In the news this week, new Premier smacked down Colin Barnett's bitter Parliament speech. Also, debate arises over new laws allowing ministers to evoke mayors and councillors, plus a new indoor aquatic facility finally opens its doors to our local residents. This is the Evening News with Ivan Moon and Danielle Stanisgall. Good evening. Premier Mark McGowan has hit back at former Premier Colin Barnett after he made a shocking speech in Parliament this week. Mr Barnett warns the Labour government could create a new WA Inc scandal, but Mr McGowan says Mr Barnett's speech lacks grace and dignity. Elise Simich begins our coverage. As heated as debates can be, it doesn't get much more personal than this. This week, Premier Mark McGowan labelled former Premier Colin Barnett as bitter and sad. This comes after Mr Barnett told Parliament that the preconditions for a new WA Inc scandal were right under the new Labor government. The one thing that is very clear to me is that the preconditions for what happened in the 80s and in the early part of this century exist today. Mr McGowan slammed these claims, saying that Mr Barnett is trashing his own legacy. When you leave high office, you can behave with dignity and grace, or you can act like Mark Latham and Tony Abbott. And Mr Barnett is following the Latham Abbott route. Liberal opposition members believe Mr Barnett's comments are a reaction to the Labor government's failure to answer questions accurately, labelling Labor's golden standard in transparency as fool's gold. Yeah, maybe the Premier, former Premier is looking at it and saying, well, why are they being uh, sneaky so early in this term? And considering they have such a large majority, why aren't they being open, honest and transparent? The WA Inc scandal saw the government lose $1 billion of public money in the 1980s to deals between the Brian Burke Labor government and businessmen such as Alan Bond. Elise Simich for WAMN News. There are debates whether new legislation should be drafted to allow the state government to sack mayors or councillors over serious breaches. Local Government Minister David Templeman has expressed frustration over the current laws as it forbids him to sack Perth Lord Mayor Lisa Scafidi. Nelson Liu has more. It's a potential law change following a long-running saga involving Perth's Lord Mayor and the McGowan government says it's needed. I'm frustrated. The state government is considering amending legislation to stand down individual councillors for serious breaches instead of only whole councils. If that was indeed serious, uh, uh, then they could, with this amendment to the legislation, deal with the, that member uh, in the ways that I mentioned. It comes as the State Administrative Tribunal upheld 45 allegations against Lisa Scafidi last week for not disclosing gifts and travel. The state government says the Lisa Scafidi disclosure matter has taken too long to resolve, but the possible law changes would help the government deal with local government breaches more efficiently. Experts are concerned the laws currently existing in Queensland and Victoria could be used as a political battleground. This gives them an opportunity to sort of you know, get rid of opponents, get rid of people they don't like. But the opposition says while the action needs reform, it should be used to genuinely deal with government breaches. We're not just doing this for political reasons. Nelson Liu, WAMN News. The bidding war between Australian telecommunications company TPG and US private equity firm Hellman and Friedman has caused Fairfax shares jumped to a six-year high. The media company's shares have risen 6% since last year. However, unions in the media industry hold concerns for the company, yet Fairfax is brought out by a private equity firm. They're pretty ruthless kinds of organisations. On one level, um, it's positive that there are people bidding for such a, uh, a company, um, there's obviously some, they see some value in it, but um, how they might treat it as an asset is um, a moot point. The first home buyer's grant will be slashed down to $10,000 as of June 30 this year. The grant was originally budgeted to last until the end of December. However, it's not all bad news, with interest rates at an all-time low and housing prices dropping as a result of the end of the mining boom. While home builders' advice to buyers is to hurry up, the Premier defended the government's decision. I think there's the potential that it, that it will slightly impact on the industry, um, but frankly there is $10,000 as first homeowner grant specific to new builds, not on established but new builds, and that's quite critical. Tall looping water slides has become a major draw card for City of Coburn's new aquatic recreation centre, which cost $109 million. The new facility also features a six-court multi-purpose stadium, three-headed recreation pools, state-of-the-art gym, 
group fitness area and athletic training facilities. Kobe Mayor Logan Hallett was accompanied by federal and state ministers along with Fremantle Football Club president to open the facility. We thought it was a state-of-the-art facility. It offered a whole lot that the community didn't have. So that's a great um, change and improvement and now this world-class facility available to, to all people. Sweden's top prosecutor has dropped the charges faced by Julia Assange, ending the seven-year legal standoff. Mr Assange has sought a refuge at the Ecuadorian embassy in London since 2012. Swedish Director of Prosecution said in a statement there is no foreseeable way Assange will be surrendered to Sweden, so she has no choice but to drop the charges. Mr Assange has always maintained he is entirely innocent throughout this case. Former FBI Director James Comey has been appointed by the Department of Justice to investigate Trump's relationship with Russia during the 2016 election campaign. Under this structure, the special counsel has the power to conduct their own independent investigation from the department. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein says Mr Comey was hired due to public interest. And finally this week, the annual African Day was held on the weekend to celebrate African migrants' contribution to Australia. The event was filled with performances by some of the best artists in the continent, along with the Miss Popularity competition leading up to the Miss African Perth contest. This is a, an opportunity where Australians will learn to know about us. They know that we are not just a country, but we are a continent that constitutes 54 countries. We are very diverse and we've got a lot of good things in us to share with them in this country. So we need to work together, we need to come and see us, what we can do. And those are the top stories you need to know this week. We have the latest news on our website and Facebook. Until next week, good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.